now we are working in uh, Star Street, uh, which is known as the historical street uh, leading uh, to the Church of the Nativity. Uh, it's known as the Star uh, Street because it's believed that it's from where the three wise men have followed, or the three Magi have followed the star to pay homage to the baby Jesus born in the Grotto of the Nativity. So we are walking now on the historical main entrance of the old city of Bethlehem. Now we are reaching to the, in front of us, reaching to the main entrance to the old city of Bethlehem known as Kos Zarara or the Arch of Zarara. Here we are standing in the city center of Bethlehem, exactly on the major square and in front of the Church of the Nativity, the oldest church in Palestine and in the world. The Church of the Nativity is constructed on the birthplace of Jesus Christ, constructed by Queen Helen, the mother of the Emperor Constantine in the 4th century. The church that we see in front of us, uh, unfortunately, has been destroyed and damaged in the 6th century by the Samaritans and then reconstructed again by, the, uh, by Justinian, the Byzantine emperor in that period. The church that we see now is the only church that has not been destroyed since the 6th century till today. And it's one of the most important Christian holy sites in the world. It rep represents the birthplace of Christ. And from here, from this town of Bethlehem, uh, Jesus was born and Christianity was spread throughout the world from this very place. We may see the, uh, the capital there and the gate that is closed uh, by a small gate, arch gate, but the, the biggest gate goes back to Justinian made small by the arch, by the crusaders who also conquered Bethlehem and occupied Bethlehem in the year 1099. And the smallest gate that we see here is known as the Gate of Humility. It's from the 1500. Why it was made so small like this? Actually, it is to prevent uh, tax collectors. We talk about Mamluk tax collectors who used to come to the church to collect ta taxes riding horses. So the monks have decided to make it small. So. Uh, horses won't be able to get inside the church. And the second reason as well is to uh, uh, force people to bend and respect this holy place. The Church of the Nativity in April 2nd, 2002 was uh, under siege by the Israeli army. Uh, for 39 days, Israeli tanks, armored vehicles, jeeps, military were surrounding the church. Uh, uh, during that period and they even shoot at the church and they left lots of damage to the Church of the Nativity. Bullets have hit the facade of the church as well as the mosaic that dates back to the 12th century. We are now inside the Basilica of the Nativity. It's the main church, the old part of the Church of the Nativity. Uh, as you may see, the basilica has uh, many beautiful pillars or columns. Uh, these pillars consist of uh, local stone. Uh, one piece, each stone has uh, six meters height. Uh, and then there are beautiful capitals uh, uh, over each uh, uh, pillar. And then we have a wooden bridge that connects these 50 pillars together. Why wood? Because it's to prevent if there is any uh, any case or any time an earthquake. So it's like a protection to, to the church uh, of the nativity. If you look at the uh, roof of the church of the nativity, you will notice that it's made uh, out of uh, wood. This wood is uh, brought uh, from Italy. And the wood, actually part of the wood, uh, dates back to 700 years. And the most recent wood uh, dates back to 300 years and you would notice when looking at the roof of the church of the nativity that it looks like a cross uh, the church of the nativity uh, has been constructed on the cave or the stable where jesus has been born uh, we know that jesus was born in a stable and uh, uh, 
in a cave because our stables in Palestine and in Bethlehem in particular are in caves. It's mainly for security reasons. In the year 2012, uh, the Church of the Nativity was listed as World Heritage Site of Humanity by UNESCO, but under danger because there was a structural problem in the church, humidity problems with the roof. Uh, so the church had to be restored and renovated. Uh, since then, the year two, 2012 till today, restoration work did not finish yet. Uh, the roof has been restored, the walls, the mosaic that surrounds the church, and more excavations took place and more discoveries on the floor, mainly from the mosaic that dates back to the uh, 4th century. Only last year, the Church of the Nativity was declared not anymore under danger, which means that it has been so well restored and uh, uh, really it has become so beautiful. Uh, we are now inside the growth of the nativity, the birthplace of Jesus, the very place according to the traditions. We know that Jesus was born here from the first who have witnessed the birth of Jesus here, and as well as archaeology. So we are sure that Jesus was born into this uh, or inside this very uh, place. We uh, have uh, here the star of the nativity, uh, the silver star that marks the birthplace or the place where Mary has given birth to uh, Jesus Christ. As well as we have here the uh, altar of the manger. We know that after Jesus was born, he was placed in an altar and this, uh, or this manger. And we know the manger is something that uh, uh, is used for animals, you know. But this was the sign that was given to the shepherds. You'll find a baby uh, in a manger. So Jesus was even put in a manger where animals used to eat food from the mangers. Uh, as well as here we have uh, the tradition or an altar dedicated to the Mejai, the three Mejai who have come here to honor uh, Jesus and pay him homage uh, in, in this uh, very place. We are here inside the uh, chapel of the angel, uh, the angel uh, that appeared to the shepherds uh, after Jesus, Jesus was born. Uh, the chapel is dedicated to this angel. Uh, this chapel was constructed in 1953 by an Italian architect known uh, or called Barlocci. Uh, uh, the chapel here is famous of its beautiful paintings inside the paintings that represent the birth of Jesus and when the angel appeared to the shepherds and afterwards when the shepherds returned back full with joy uh, here. Uh, the chapel here is uh, famous as well for lots of pilgrims who come to sing inside because of its architecture. Uh, architecture that, um, uh, you know, uh, pilgrims come to sing here. It's very acoustic. And the dome is very famous because it represents, uh, uh, it brings light inside the, the church uh, that reflects also the, that the birth of Jesus also brought light uh, to the world. We are here in the shepherd's field. Uh, it's the place where the angel of God has appeared to the shepherds to announce the, the good news. You may notice that we are in a, in a cave here or in a stable uh, uh, this is actually used to be the dwelling or the dwellings uh, for both the shepherds and the animals. They used to say underground or in caves. The question why they were saying in caves or in the underground, uh, keeping the animals underground, uh, it's for security uh, reasons. If you, read in, if you read in the Bible, they were keeping their eyes, watching their flock. Uh, the cave here is one of uh, many caves. We have dozens of caves on the, on the sites here. And uh, the tradition says again that uh, this is where the angel appeared and announced the, uh, the good news. Here we have traditions. When we talk about traditions, it's oral tradition from one generation to another generation until Christianity was allowed in the fourth century and then churches and monasteries were uh, constructed. The site here we have an old uh, church or monastery that was uh, constructed by the Byzantines in the 5th century but unfortunately destroyed by the Persians in 614. 
Uh, as you may notice, um, the, the color of the rock here is dark. It's from uh, burning fire here to heat or to cook uh, in the old times. Uh, Bethlehem is a very important city uh, related to its history, its background, uh, its biblical history and importance. Uh, Bethlehem used to be part of Jerusalem historically, uh, but since the occupation uh, and the construction of this uh, apartheid wall, uh, things have totally changed. Uh, Bethlehem is totally isolated from Jerusalem. It's a twin city uh, by this uh, wall that is more than uh, 11 meters high. Uh, we have this wall constructed in Bethlehem since the year 2003-2004. Uh, by Israel uh, to actually isolate Bethlehem from Jerusalem and to segregate it as well. Uh, this wall uh, consists of a uh, concrete wall, as you may see, as well as uh, it consists of fence uh, with sensors. Uh, uh, this wall actually makes life so difficult here. We have lots of consequences, results, uh, uh, bad impacts on businesses because of, of the wall. Lots of shops have been closed uh, since uh, the construction of the wall. So the economy of Bethlehem actually has suffered a lot because of this wall. In Bethlehem, we have three refugee camps. Uh, and these refugees uh, who live in these camps uh, come from uh, around 50 destroyed villages uh, by Israel in 1948. And they've been expelled and been living in camps since, since then. Uh, the wall encircles all Bethlehem and separates its villages from the main town, uh, Bethlehem. Uh, we have as well uh, uh, more than 23 Jewish colonies that surround a uh, Bethlehem area. So we have this like circle of wall and colonies, Jewish colonies that are illegally constructed on uh, our land. Uh, as you may see the wall, how it serpents actually uh, around the Palestinian homes here. Uh, this makes it so clear that this wall is not for security as Israel claims, it's more to grab land. Behind the wall on the other side, there is no Israel. There is a land, empty land that belongs to Palestinians that have been confiscated. So the wall is a wall of annexation. It annexes the land the Palestinian lands, and it separates Palestinians from their lands and Palestinians from Palestinians. Uh, the wall was as well a major attraction for international artists who have come here actually not to decorate the wall, but rather to protest this apartheid and this ugly and shameful wall. One of the main uh, artists is known as Banksy who came to Bethlehem many times, who came to Palestine many times. He painted, he's a famous street artist, and who painted on the wall and painted on private walls in the Bethlehem area. And in the year 2017, Banksy has decided to open the Waldorf Hotel with the most ugly or the ugliest view in the world. Mm -hmm. 